I really was driven by making more money, hustling, but at the same time, I wasn't saving any. I realized that less is more. And my happiness now is really coming from having a good night of sleep, have a really good workout day, or just in general, having a healthy meal. I didn't really start to save when I, up until I was 26 years old. And just to think about all the money, all the dining out money, all the drinks that I bought, all the clothes that I bought, now I'm no longer wear. I just won't make that up. You know, like I just want to make it up so I can feel better in a way. Hi, I'm Yachi. I'm from a small town in China and I always dreamed of a better life. So I left everything behind. After 10 years of dedication and hard work, I began to build a life that I love. Welcome to my world. I'm grateful for how far I've come and I can't wait to share my journey with you. Hello, welcome to my channel. Today, I really wanna share these five financial lessons that I learned in my 20s. I will say I don't really regret anything that I did in my 20s. I personally think I was more on a self-discovery journey. But now I'm 30, think back, if I had this financial mindset in my early 20s, I would be a lot more ahead <laughs> at my 30. <laughs> Anyways, these lessons not only helped me to grow as a person, but also financial wise. There's no time to waste, let's get started. Lesson number one, buy things or wear things to impress other people or just in general to show people how you wanted to be seen. At the end of the day, you'll be the only one who ended up with less money in your bank account. I really learned this lesson hard way because I grew up in a small town in China. So for the longest time, in my opinion, wearing more expensive stuff, look more successful, it actually means that you are successful. But then over the years, I have realized that there are a lot of millionaires, billionaires out there they wouldn't care. They wouldn't care what they're gonna wear that day. They wouldn't care what purses they're gonna carry that day. They've got a bigger decision to make every day. So when I realized that, I realized that during COVID, it's because people are more focused on themselves and especially mental health. So that was a wake up call. I realized that, that to have a good night of sleep and not being so stressed about small things during the day or having a good workout day can really boost up my energy, my mood. And that is so important. All I cared about, it's a well-balanced, healthy lifestyle. Lesson number two, invest in yourself. I see this both ways, financial-wise and non-financial-wise. Financial-wise, it's more like saving for future, which I never really did up until I was 26 years old. So before in my early 20s, I was living in paycheck to paycheck. So I loved dining out, going out with friends, buying new clothes once a while. And yeah, so I did not really save up until four years ago, I started to realize, okay, so if I wanted to have a home, I should start to save now so I can actually have a house in the future. And that's when I started to save. And now I'm seeing my money is growing money without me doing anything. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing feeling. In non-financial wise, it's more like investing in knowledge, skills, and help you in a self-growth journey. So I did this by going back to school three years ago, and now I'm about to graduate and receive a degree. So I believe this degree can really help me to evaluate my career and my current position. So that was a big investment that I did. It was time a little time consuming because it does take time. Also, you need to put a lot of effort in as well. It also have a lot of cost. It's because you're going to universities, you have to pay those tuitions. But those are the investment lifetime. So you invest in yourself once you have the degree and now you can only go up from there. Lesson number three, you don't need a lot of stuff in your life. 
Also, valuable stuff is not purchasable. I learned this lesson when I met my current partner. I was someone <laughs> who needs this in my life, who needs this at home. I always have the excuse to be like, if I purchase this, it can make my life easier. If I buy this, it will make me happier. I just have that excuse somehow in my head and then I kept bringing home stuff. And every single time when I go shopping, I have some sort of excuse to purchase stuff. And then I ended up with a lot of things at home that sometimes I don't really use them, but I just feel good to have them sitting there. And now I met my current partner, we moved in together. I realized that less is more. And by having less stuff at home, can really make you feel like spacious. It's like I have a brighter, I have a bigger home, but at the same time, I am living in a minimalism style. We're not quite there yet, but <laughs> we're trying to. And that can really simplify your life. But at the longest time, I feel like I need something to make my life is more simplified. But the truth is, no. Your life will be simplified when you feel like you don't need a lot of stuff in your life. And my happiness now is really coming from having a good night of sleep, have a really good workout day, or just in general, having a healthy meal. Lesson number four, celebrate your progress. And this is something that I, n I have never done in my 20s. I was never someone who's like, oh, you've reached the goal, you should celebrate. I came from a very strict Chinese family and in my culture, or at least in my family, you should never be satisfied when you accomplish something. You should always look for what's your next goal because you're growing and you should grow. So every time when I hit a money goal, for example, at the very early on when I started to save, my goal was $2,000. So when I saved the $2,000, I was so happy, but then I'm like, okay, $2,000 is not enough because I wanted to buy a house in the future. And then my next goal is $5,000. After that was $10,000. And when I had two jobs, my goal was $50,000. But I never ever celebrated every single time when I hit the goal. Because every time when I hit a goal, I just try to achieve next goal. and. I probably should have rewarded myself in some sort of way because I probably could have treated myself with a trip, you know, like go out being like trying to open up my mind and or open my eyes to see different culture. But that's something that I never did. My first ever trip was last year going to Europe. Like I've never really traveled the world before. Yeah, sorry, I'm just a little emotional <laughs> when I talk about this because I have been really hard on myself, especially financial wise, because I just feel like I'm a little behind than a lot of people since I didn't really start to save when I, up until I was 26 years old. And just to think about all the money, all the dining out money, all the drinks that I bought, all the clothes that I bought, now I'm no longer wear. I just won't make that up. You know, like I just want to make it up so I can feel better in a way. That was a, this was a big lesson that I learned as well. And now I'm kind of do a small celebration here and there. If I have hit a 1K goal in my bank account, I'm like, yes, this was my goal and I'm going to celebrate it. But I, I'm not going to celebrate it like big, but I might be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to buy myself a gelato because I hit this $1,000 goal. From now on, not just a financial wise, in all the progress that I do, I, I'm i now like start to at least recognize it and tell myself that I did a good job. Lesson number five. There are lots of things can make you happy in life and shopping is not one of them. Many, many years ago, I always felt like I have the need of bringing home new stuff. I just feel like my home needs some new stuff. And that bring me the happiness, excitement when I come home. So that did last 
quite a time because I kept to bring new stuff home, like new decoration, new clothes, or just to, or sometimes even new set of spoon forks. I'm like, ooh, like this is nice. I'm using new stuff, but. Then in the past a couple of years, I'm like, this is really unnecessary. Like I don't, I don't have to have ten sets of spoon. That's exaggerating. I don't have ten sets of spoon, but like I do couple of sets that I like for different occasion. For example, I've got birthday set. I've got a holiday set. I've got normal day set. It just,、uh, I'm like, it's really unnecessary, you know. <laughs> but anyways. Shopping doesn't really bring you long-term happiness. I have to say, it does bring you some sort of excitement, happiness in a short period of time, but that is going to be long gone, like very soon. So now I just kind of focused on budgeting and focused on building my own wealth. And now I look at my bank account sometimes, like I'm,、mm, it's good. I don't have a need to shop and spend this money. There you have it. Five personal finance lessons that I learned in my twenties, and those really made my life some sort of difference now in my thirties. So I really hope these lessons can help you to grow in your own finance journey. That is being said, it's coming to the end. If you haven't, please make sure to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you next week. Bye.